Yes guys, welcome back. So we are handling with recognition and measurement from here on. Guys, recognition and measurement is one of the most important aspects. So what we have been discussing so far is only the preliminary part of the standard. So let's get back to recognition and measurement, one of the most important parts. Let me just check if we are live or not. So I think I was live. I'll be taking up your comments as well. I don't find many of you connected uh, back again. I'll just wait for a second. Guys, connect back fast. It can't take so long. Guys, connect back fast, fast, fast. Get back fast. I've given you a break so that you people can have some water, you can go to washrooms and other stuff. Guys, in the comment section, the place from which you are streaming, I want your place from which you are streaming. You are streaming from Hyderabad, you are streaming from Chennai, you are streaming from Bangalore. I want the place from where you are streaming. I hope that you people are safe, but please make sure that I am notified from where you are streaming. Please put it in the comment section. Wherever you are from, please put it in the comment section. I just wanted to see where you people are from. We have some time because we did not get all the students back. Waiting for them, waiting for them to be back. Karnataka, Sachin, Fab, Brood, Hyderabad. How is Hyderabad treating men? How is the lockdown going? Lockdown? Sirupati. Kuntosh. Ubli. Yes, guys, how is the lockdown treating everyone? Fed up with the lockdown. So what uh, is the latest news that we have is probably the education institutes could be shut for a much longer period of time than what you people are expecting. The lockdown might probably end after May 3rd, May 7th, May 20th, whatever dates the state governments and the central governments have decided, I have no idea. But uh, especially when it comes to the education institutions, the bigger problem would be that they might be shut for a much prolonged period of time. So all those people who are still waiting for the face-to-face -face classes to go up, I can see some people have actually texted me regarding face-to-face -face classes. I don't see any near time possibility of face-to-face -face classes coming up guys, because education institutes have, have to basically agree that we might be putting a lot of students to risk because we have all cramped up classrooms on today's date, right? Everyone agrees that. We don't have such a liberty where, uh, you know, the exam halls are much spacious than what you can see in a classroom kind of environment. So these live classes should keep you updated, could, should keep you going. I don't think so. This are the problem. Exams, guys. Rakesh, I think you have a very big obsession regarding the exams, man. June 24th or whatever the date, I think I see as announced as June 24th. And they will be on that date. There's no doubt regarding that. Man. There's no doubt. See, they will make arrangements in such a way that probably your seating might be a little more, uh, you know, probably spread out than what it is. But 100% by that time, you will not see the same situation prevailing. So I think you have to keep up. Uh, will the exam be cancelled? Varad, you waiting for the exams to be cancelled or what? Dude, the, the point is the exam should not be cancelled, right? The exam should go on. That is how more number of students will pass out and... You don't have to slog yeah. for even further more period. You know, I would be really irritated if my May exams are postponed to June. How many A's will you cover? Sachin, I'll try to cover as many as possible. Man. You know, either in the live session or in the recorded session, my concept is basically to cover as many as possible along with even the practical illustrations as well. So I'll come back to that. I think we have uh, more than 30 people who have already joined the live. So I can start up the session and the remaining people might join the session at a later point of time. But what we are talking about right now is the recognition and measurement.
So the recognition and measurement Yeah, Monica, I'll do the India's 115 continuation part as well. So recognition and measurement when I'm talking about, I'm first bringing in the concept straight into the concept of less even. Because if you remember, we did discuss about Lessee's accounting and I said Lessee is the one which has undergone a change. And I gave you a word if you remember, ROU asset. So this ROU asset is what will bring up now whenever we are doing the recognition under lessee's account in a simple sense a lessee will recognize an asset an rou asset 100 percent under any lease be it a finance lease or an operating lease We will have to recognize the transaction or we will have to recognize the entry as ROU asset account debit to lease liability. Be it a finance lease or be it operating lease, I will go only with this kind of entry which I have written right now. ROU asset account debit to lease liability. This is the entry that I recognize whenever there is a lease, be it a finance lease or an operating lease in the books of lessee or in the language of the standard, we have also been calling him as a buyer. A buyer or the lessee will basically recognize the transaction as ROU asset account debit to lease liability. Whenever we come up with this logic of ROU asset account debit to lease liability, we will have to first understand what is the measurement. If this is your recognition, I agree that this is the recognition concept. Then what is the measurement? There is an amount which has to be written. What is the amount that I will write? So when we come to the concepts of measurement, we will have to measure it at present value of lease payments over the lease term. It is present value of lease payments over the lease term. What is this present value of lease payments over lease term? And if I say present value, when I come up with this logic of present value, then you should ask me the question, what is the discount rate? At what rate should I discount it so that I can come to the present value? This is very, very one of the very, very important questions. Correct? So when I'm looking at the measurement, I'm saying it is present value of lease payments over the lease term and should be discounted at the discount rate which is applicable out here the discount rate which is applicable over here will be implicit rate of return which is nothing but the IRR or if not possible to get implicit rate of return we will use incremental borrowing rate Now, 
what is this present value of lease payments over lease term? What is the discount rate? When I was talking about implicit rate of return or incremental borrowing rate, what do they mean? Interest rate implicit from lease. When I come up with this logic, IRR, or I'll call it as interest rate implicit from lease. It is nothing but the rate at which the fair value of asset is equal to the present value of future lease payments over the lease term. So you have to use the IRR logic guys to get this where you take all the lease payments in a stream, check at what rate it is equal to the fair value. So where you fund, once you apply, you'll get an NPV negative. Once you apply, you'll get NPV positive. Between those two rates lies the IRR. So it's the same IRR language. But generally I'm talking about, this will be given in the exam. You don't have to break your head for that. Fine. Sir, practically possible? Yes, possible. What is there? Is equal to IRR rate is anyways there. It is a Excel formula for IRR. So in the exam, it will be difficult to find out IRR using those formula, which is which you have learned earlier. But as far as Excel is concerned, Excel will give you the result right like this and without any problem. Then what is an incremental borrowing rate? I will use an incremental borrowing rate if I am not able to establish what is an IRR. What is an incremental borrowing rate? Why do people go for a lease? Because I don't have sufficient money to buy the asset. Absolutely, right? So if I take the asset on lease, monthly, monthly, I have to pay it. But if I have to buy the asset, then I'll have to immediately pay such a huge amount of money to buy the asset. So what is the other alternative? Instead of leasing it, take a loan and buy the asset. Absolutely, right? If you have a problem in paying the entire amount upfront, that is your basic problem, then go to a banker. The banker will give you a loan. With that loan amount, you go and buy the asset, whatever you want. Even that is an option. Now, my question is, if I would have gone, had I gone to... Uh, Kaushik sir is saying, excellent session. Kaushik sir, definitely not better than yours. You are the best. You are the best. So, yes guys, I'm getting into the concept back again. So, I'm saying, if I would have gone to the banker, borrowed money, okay, borrowed money, and I would have tried to repay the loan. If I would have bought an asset by borrowing the money, at what rate the banker would have lent the money to me? That is called as incremental borrowing rate. I'll again repeat why the concept of incremental borrowing rate appears. Why did you go for a lease? Because I cannot purchase the asset immediately. Absolutely right. Because I don't have so much of money to buy the asset at one single shot. Let's say the asset value is about one and a half crore. One and a half crore of cash I do not have in my pocket right now. What do I do if I don't have one and a half crore in my pocket? Rather, I would basically try to borrow funds from the banker, go and basically pay, you know, buy the asset and keep repaying this loan in installments. Or the other easier option is going for leasing the so lease is always an option or an alternative to purchasing the asset on borrowing it the, by borrowing the money. So when you borrow the money, instead of leasing it, if you've gone with the option of buying the asset by borrowing funds, then at what rate would have you borrowed the funds is called as incremental rate of borrowing. Whenever we talk about these kind of logics, so this is basically what my ROU asset should be measured at. Measured at present value of lease payments over the lease term. So now let's take an example. I will uh, start using Excel so that it will become easier for me to get this logic. I hope I will not be confusing you people with a lot of Excel on.
Yes, guys, let's say I came back to an Excel sheet. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yeah, I think the Excel is visible. Yeah, let's say for example, the least term is, uh, I'll just increase the, so that it becomes big. Let's say I have a lease term of five years now, okay? And uh, let's say the lease payments over the period is about uh, 20,000, I'll take it. And this has to be paid per month, for example. If I have to recognize a uh, ROU asset under these terms, okay, five years, 20,000 rupees is what I have to take. Now, let's say now I have to find out what is the value of lease payments. Guys, one second, I'm sorry. Again, this has become small. Yeah. Now, if I have to find out what is the value of ROU asset, so I'll write the entry as ROU asset account debit. Two lease liability if this is my entry I just need an amount to be written out here so I'll put the amount like this is equal to present value sorry sum of oh I I wanted you people to see it right so I'll put it like this let, let me take it as per annum so that I'll be it will be easier for us to calculate so I wanted you people to understand the calculation I will not use formulas okay so first year second year third year fourth year and fifth year these are my five years and the amount to be paid or lease payments under this would be 20,000 rupees every month now I want a PVF present value factor uh, I want I need an interest rate right so let's say that the IRR of this I'm just taking it for a purpose because I told you anyways it will be given in the exam I'm taking it as 10% is equal to 1 divided by 1.1 so I got the PVF like this and the subsequent PVF I'll keep dividing it by 1.1 again 0 0.826 0 0.74 751 0 0.683 yeah so I've got it so I'm just bringing it to two decimals for the purpose of ease now I'm talking about it so present value factors if I have to consider I'm sorry DCF or discounted cash flows if I consider then I will be taking it up like this as a multiplication I will sum this is equal to sum of I got it as 75,000 I got it as 75,815 so I will have to recognize this ROU asset as 75,815.74. This is the entry that I will record as far as my balance sheet is concerned. Clear? 
this is the logic when I talk about recognition if someone wants to take it down you can take it down if you have understood you can move on no problem yes guys so whenever I'm talking about initial recognition I will debit the ROU asset or I'll recognize an asset as an ROU asset and I will credit the lease liability during the period be it finance lease be it operating lease I'm least bothered I would use the same technique under operating or finance lease if I am talking from the books of the lessee out there. Now, if I go back, so this is what I said. So I would use the asset definition as measurement as present value of lease payments over the lease term. So the lease term was five years and I kept on basically discounting the entire cash flows or stream of cash flows taking an IRR rate of 10% and that is the answer which I got. What about subsequent measurement? Now you people can come back to me uh, the sheet and talk about the subsequent measurements. My subsequent measurement of ROU asset as well as my lease liability. Both of them I have to talk about. Subsequent measurement I'll have to talk about ROU asset, I'll also have to talk about the lease liability. How will I subsequently recognize an ROU asset? How will I subsequently recognize a lease liability? ROU asset, subsequently, I'll go as per India 16. I hope everyone remembers India 16 subsequent recognition can be as per either cost approach or revaluation approach. Guys, if you people do not know in day 16, then you can go back to my channel. There are There is a, a, a particular video made on in day 16. You can refer back to that. Either cost approach or revaluation approach, you can follow either of them as, as per in day 16. Lease liability, when it comes up to, I will start recognizing subsequently the lease liability. at amortized cost using effective interest rate. This is the terminology this is the terminology which is used under your India's 109 as well where you have amortized cost assets or liabilities which are measured financial liabilities or financial assets which are measured in amortized cost you use it based on amortized cost using effective interest rate so rou asset i'll go as per india 16 either apply a cost approach or apply or apply a revaluation approach when i talk about a lease liability i will recognize it at amortized cost using effective interest rate then someone will come up with a question of what is this amortized cost using effective interest rate. Now let's come back. I'll go back to the Excel sheet. I'll take the same example and I'll start showing you how a leased asset and lease liability works. I'm very I'm trying to find out what is amortized cost using EIR. Effective interest rate, I'm just using the short form of EIR your opening amortized cost dropping the text yeah. effective interest I've discounted it using 10% so I will take the effective interest as 10% itself so I can't take anything else. Whatever is the rate at which you discounted it, that will be the amount. Lease payments. Whatever I'm paying each year. And then I will get back to my closing amortized cost. At the end of each year, what is the value at which I will find my lease liability? So 
first year i started with an opening value of 95815 correct that is the opening i will take an effective rate of interest as 10% because that is a rate at which i have discounted it i'll apply the same rate my repayment every year is 20000 that is a lease payment which i make now when i have to take the closing i'll take the opening i will add the interest i'll deduct the lease payment and i'll get the next year's closing like this if i do it for all the five years you'll understand how the stream goes on I have to apply dollars there because the value will be constant. That's it. Now I'll start applying over this period of throughout the five years. Now look at it. Now look at it. Automatically it became zero towards the end of fifth year. Now what did I do? I've taken the opening amount I cost taken an effective interest rate as 10% that is the rate at which I have discounted and I kept on calculating the effective interest and then I have taken the lease payments whatever is there as a repayment of my liability because the liability to pay lease rentals will keep on reducing as you keep on making the lease payments so I will automatically get what is the closing amortized cost now look at the entry which I am going to write here okay I will start recording the accounting entry guys here so what did I do? I repaid 20,000. That is a logic, right? So I'll repay 20,000. So I'll put it up here. I'll write it as two cash or bank. I'll repay 20,000. That is what I've done. How will I pass the entry in the debits? The first one. I will recognize finance charges. account debit I'll recognize finance charges account debit if I'm talking about year one okay this is a year one entry year one entry finance charges account debit what is the finance charges of the first year 7581 so I'll take that first year's effective interest is 7581 the balance amount, my liability has to reduce. What liability? My lease liability has to reduce. By what amount? I paid 20,000 out of which 7,581 is considered as my interest. So the 12,418 will be considered as my lease liability. Now you will say, sir, closing amortized cost is 63,397. Did we get that? Yes. Look at the first initial credit at year zero. First recognition, I have done 75,815. I have debited it by 12,418. What is the closing figure now? 75,815 debit minus 12,418 credit. This should give me 63,397. That is exactly the same figure as my closing amortized cost. So what is the entry which I recognize every year? Finance charges account debit, lease liability account debit, two cash or bank 20,000. What about the ROU asset? ROU asset, if I am talking as for the cost model, I would have recognized depreciation account debit, two ROU asset. What is the entry? Five years is the total value of the for the total period of lease. So over five years period, I'll keep writing off the depreciation. So this is how I get the value. So these are the two entries which I'll have to record at the end of first year. These are my year one entries. Guys, let me tell you something that your depreciation entry will remain constant throughout. Be it year 1, year 1 to 5, your depreciation on a straight line basis will be the same. There is no change as far as your depreciation is concerned. 
what changes each year is the finance charges if i go as per year 2 what will be the entry my year 2 entry finance charges will be 6339.73 lease liability will be about 13660.27 and credit will go to my cash or bank which will be 20000 back again Yes guys so i hope everyone is getting it so guys you can comment if you have any doubts regarding the calculation so far because this is the serious change the rest of the uh, rest of the things are very simple there's no great difficulty or you know, no great difference in anything else so keep keep putting the comments for any clarification regarding the thing which i put up just now please make sure that your comments are there Yes, guys, is that all? Yes, guys. So now this is the recognition and measurement. As far as uh, I don't get any comments, right? I didn't get any comments. People can pull in the comments, guys. Please make sure that you pull in the comments so that I would be knowing whether you're following the concept or not. So that is my subsequent measurement of an ROU asset and the lease liability. So I got you into the exact concept. Now the presentation part, ROU asset should be presented under property plan and equipment, but distinctly is what he says. What do you mean by distinct? That means you cannot include it or you cannot club it. Let's say, for example, I have a building which is on lease. I have a building which is my own. I cannot combine these two values just because they are buildings. Because one is a freehold property which I own it. The other one is an ROU asset which is leased out. Therefore, you have to present it distinctly under the head of property plan and equipment as ROU assets. So ROU assets should not be clubbed with the assets which you own. should be mentioned separately on the face of the balance sheet itself same logic goes into lease liability as well lease liability should be split between current leases uh, sorry current liabilities and non current liability current liability is the lease liability which i'll be paying it up in the next 12 months and anything which is paid beyond next 12 months i'll call it as non current part so wherever you present it be it under current or non current they are financial liabilities but they should be distinctly presented from any other liability and should not be clubbed with any other liability is what the standard says so that will bring us to the end of the concept as far as the lessee is concerned then comes to the concept where i talk about the lessor guys whenever i'm talking about the lessor concept the lessor i do not want to spend any time on this because in day 17 or as 19 both the standards are up on my youtube live you can look at the entire video starting from where the lessor accounting starts 
Got it? Because the lesser accounting exactly is the same as what we have learned. So when we look at lessor's accounting, I will give you a quick browse. Get a comment, it's streaming now. So any chance of discount rate being diff different from effective interest rate? Monica, no man. Uh, discount rate and effective interest rate will exactly be the same thing. So if someone wants to operate my dream viewer. Office is working, so probably the office calls. So, books of lesser. Okay. When I touch the books of lesser, I'll have to look at finance lease and operating lease separately. It is unlike lessee where the accounting was the same for operating and finance lease. But for a lessor, the operating and finance lease have to be dealt with separately. If I'm looking at finance lease, then initially I have to recognize Reese receivable account debit to lease asset. If it is held as an asset in your books, guys, or you can consider it as sales. If that is your operating activity, if that is the operating activity of the lessor, then he will consider it as sales. This will again be measured at present value of future lease payments. No change as far as the measurement is concerned. But operating leases when I talk about lease payment should be recognized as lease payment should be recognized as income over the lease term. Yes guys, so this is the books of Lessor. Lessor, I don't want to stress upon more than this because it is the same accounting treatment which was there under AS19 as well as in AS17. Guys, one more quick suggestion which I wanted to give you is there are close to 85 illustrations which ICA has given. All that you have to do is ICA education material on in AS116 Go on this, click the first post, you'll get education material on in days 116. Go for this. So it quickly opens up your educational material, guys. Don't be panicked with looking at the number of pages, okay? It says 194 pages, but the content of this is only up to 28 pages or 30 pages, not more than that. Because he talks about uh, Lessor's accounting in detail, that is the reason why probably, you know, he might have got up to 25 or 30 sites, not even 25 to 30 sites. He just came up to about 26 sites, guys. Okay. 
So he just came up to 26 slides. And after that, he all has practical questions starting from 26th page. Right from 26th page, you have all practical questions on this. So I would definitely suggest you people to go ahead and try to at least look into a few questions. I'm not saying the entire 84 or 85 questions have to be looked into. I'm not saying that. But I'm at least suggesting you people to go ahead with it. Just 25 pages of the first thing. You can ignore that because we have actually covered majority except for the lessor accounting. Lessor accounting I still did not want to touch upon. That is the reason why I, because it's a repetition of AS19 or India AS17, I did not want to bring up that logic. Now, I will start talking about transition. Okay. Transitional provisions. What do you mean by transitional provisions? Transitional provisions is from when it has started. Yes, guys, according to the transitional provisions, the standard India is 116 is with effect from 1-4-2019. Okay. Under the transitional provisions, he has given two things. One is called as retrospective application. The next one is called as modified retrospective application. Both are retrospective only. One is retrospective, one is modified retrospective application. These are the two options which he has opened out to us. What is the difference between these two? What is a retrospective application? What is modified retrospective application? When I look at retrospective application, the first financial year for which I have to start doing this, India, start applying India's 19 is for the financial year 1920. Correct. Retrospective application, it should always be compared with my previous year, that is 1819. There is no doubt about this. So my retrospective application should also be done to the previous year. But along with that, whenever I do retrospective application, I'll have to have a start date. So I'll take the beginning of the previous year, 1st April 2008. This is three balance sheets which I have to present on 31st March 2020. What three balance sheets am I presenting? I'm presenting 1418. 31st March 19 and 31st March 20. This is not new to us if you remember. This is the same logic which was there even under India's 101. First adoption of India's was also there under India's 8 if you remember. Under 8 whenever there are errors or change in accounting policy again the same three balance sheets were supposed to be done. So this is retrospective application where I again get three balance sheets. What is modified retrospective then? Modified retrospective means current year 1920 and that's it. I will give it from 1st April 2019 and current year 2019, sorry, 1920 and current year 1920. That's it. I am not going to change the previous year. No corresponding change in previous year. Now someone will come up to say, Sir, how is the previous year comparable when previous year was as per India 17 and current year is as per India 116? First year, man. Transition, that's it. 
So transition, this is an exemption, but provided sufficient disclosure is done. Saying that we have gone for modified retrospective application and we did not change the previous year, everything will be given. Majority of them have chosen modified. Majority of my clients especially have chosen modified because they do not want to complicate the task by going to 1st April 2018 and converting the entire thing. Therefore, this is the two approaches which are provided under transitional provisions for the first application of India S116. So, subsequently these provisions will not be applicable for exam purpose also. All those people writing in this June and November probably you are the only two people where the transitional provisions can be tested upon. Subsequent to that 2021 onwards, I don't think so these transitional provisions will make sense because majority of the entity might have already travelled through India S116 and the transitional provisions will no longer be applicable after 2021. Clear with that? So, like I told you, this is something which I have covered in depth regarding India S116 regarding lessees because that is where the ROU asset concept will appear. That is where the entire change is. Lessors accounting, you can refer back to AS19 or in AS17. Both will give you the same logic. One more thing which I told you is go for this educational material. Go for this educational material on India S116, which is provided by ICI. Fantastically drafted one. You can refer to this. I'll give you, uh, uh, you know, in short notes as well, which will be circulated on my telegram channel guys i'll provide it on my telegram channel that should not be a problem uh, so the scope of the stand uh, you know there are exam there are some questions or illustrations which are given about 84 illustrations are there about 84 illustrations are there so you can refer back to all those 84 illustrations i think that will give you a fantastic idea even if you are not able to go through all the 84 at least go through a few 85 actually so at least go through a few that would be more than sufficient at least go through a few of them that should be more than sufficient so i'll be signing off for today i'll be signing off for today guys so this is it as far as the our live session is concerned so i hope everyone enjoyed the session i hope everyone were able to take the benefit of the session guys so all my attempt to do is you know i don't mind them because ultimately there is nothing for me to lose. I have my, you know, writing pad right there with me. I've gone to my office, picked up the writing pad. My office work is happening in the morning. I don't mind spending a couple of hours with you interacting to help you people out. That is all my intention is. So I will make sure that you people are updated each and every time. So I'll just widen my screen up so that you people can see me well. Yes, guys. So that's fantastic. Now, all those people who are confused with this, this is for the writing pad and nothing else. Yes, guys. So that was a fantastic session. I enjoyed it personally. I hope you people enjoyed it as well. But all that I'm telling you is please keep up your effort. Please don't keep on waiting that, you know, whether the June exam will be conducted, coronavirus ka kya hoga. So keep all this aside. You people concentrate as far as your exams are concerned. I will come back again live. I will make sure that all those people who are not talking about financial instruments, I will provide you financial instruments. You can bet on that. I'll make sure that financial instruments is provided to you live. Uh, but that will not be finished in a day's time. You know financial instruments is quite lengthy. And I'll have to solve a problem for you to understand what it is. 116, you don't need to. You will just go through those problems. You'll understand. It's a pure concept of present value and future value. Nothing else is there in that. If you have practiced your financial instruments enough, then you don't have to again practice under leases because financial instruments also has this present value and future value concepts so that is where i'll sign off stay home stay safe good night guys all the best uh if you haven't gone to my telegram channel go to the telegram channel because that is where i'm continuously communicating with all my students so thanks a lot guys uh further videos are there on the same channel you people can show uh, check the channel for more videos